the tall gangly thing What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be breaking down how to play Olaf and Friends in Teamfight Tactics Patch 11.2. But because this set is so new, I wanted to make sure that I was giving you guys the best information possible. To do this, I've partnered with Gunmei, arguably the best Olaf player back in set 2 when Olaf was first introduced. He wrote one of the original Olaf guides back then and he's at it again for our favorite Dragon Soul Slayer. Let's get started by first talking about the comp itself. Olaf and Friends is made up of three different categories. Slayer utility, and chosens. The slayers are made up of three units that will find themselves in every single iteration of the comp mentioned in this video. Those three units are Olaf, Pike, and Samira. Olaf needs at least Slayer 3 in order to enable him to sustain and carry the fight. Pike is the only Slayer that has an AoE stun, making him a strong unit at every stage of the game. Samira is a strong legendary unit who can wipe out the entire enemy team with a strong ultimate and can also utilize full items picked up at the carousel in later stages of the game. For those reasons, Pike and Samira are the other Slayers you'll want to run alongside Olaf. Obviously, because Samira is a 5 cost, there are many times where you'll need to run another Slayer in her place until you can find her. Now that we have our three core units, let's start building a team around them. That's where the utility champions come into play. Here are seven different utility champs that fit into this comp. Aatrox and Sejuani are the ultimate tanks, serving as the meat shields for Olaf while also providing AoE CC to your team. Morgana and Swain provide the Siphoner trait and can also utilize different items than your Slayers such as Morella and Namicon. Zillion and Janna are strong mystics that can be splashed in against AP damage teams, and Sivir is an attack speed steroid that can also give you the 3 cultist trait. Because there are so many different units that you can play in the Olaf comp, it ends up being very flexible. You can play around whatever chosen you get at level 8 and make a strong board to push for top 4 from there. The flexible nature of this composition is what makes it easy to force. In a a little bit we'll talk about which chosens you can buy and play around and which ones are strongest for your team. Now let's go through a few different variations of the comp. The standard level 8 comp gives you the 4 unit frontline of Aatrox, Olaf, Morgana, and Sedwani with the 2 Mystic and Samira backline. Pike is positioned on an edge in order to stun the enemy backline. Note that this comp doesn't rely on a chosen in order for it to work. This is the most consistent level 8 comp you'll be able to build. Six Dragon Soul really only works with the Dragon Soul spatula, as you'll still want to keep both your Vanguard frontline and your three core Slayer units. But if you can hit it, it will enable Olaf to deal massive damage with the Dragon Soul buff. Hitting Aatrox or Sidwani Vanguard Chosen will allow you to run four Vanguard. Having the four Vanguard trait in addition to Dragon Soul and Slayer on Olaf will make your team beefy and able to stall for long enough for Olaf and Samira to completely wipe out the enemy team. The 6 Slayer trait will output an insane amount of DPS from Olaf, but it trades away some of the team's utility as you aren't running Morgana, Swain, or Zillion. However, against squishier teams, this Olaf will run through them like it's nothing. Chosen, Dragon Soul, Olaf. This comp might be the strongest level 8 variation you can run, as you keep the utility of Morgana, Swain, and Sivir while also buffing Olaf with Dragon Soul. This comp has sustain, damage, and a very strong frontline that is hard for the enemy to fight through. Now let's talk about items. In his written guide, Gunmei analyzes all of the items I'm about to mention in this video in great detail. But for the video, I'm just going to keep it brief and let you know which items work best in this comp. The best in slot item build for Olaf is Runan's Hurricane, Deathblade, and Guardian Angel. Runan's Hurricane allows Olaf to cleave his opponents twice, nearly doubling his DPS and also allowing him to hit those backline carries. Deathblade scales well with Runant and has pure damage stats, and Guardian Angel is the best defensive item for Olaf as he's a melee carry who's very vulnerable. GA will allow him to die, drop aggro, and then continue to fight for the rest of the round. Here are a few other items that work well with Olaf. Rapid Fire Cannon, Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, Dragon's Claw, and Hand of Justice. You'll also want to build items for the rest of your team. Some items you can build are Morella Nomicon or Sunfire Cape, Zeke's Herald, Chalice of Power, Locket of the Iron Solari, and Redemption. And apart from Redemption, these are all items that you can slam early in order to keep your board strength up and your health high. Olaf and Friends follows a standard leveling curve. If you haven't already watched my video on the fundamentals of leveling and rolling, you can click this button right here to watch it. The shorthand is that you'll want to level to level 4, 
4 at 2-1, level 5 at 2-5, level 6 at 3-2, level 7 at 4-1, and level 8 at 5-1 or 5-2. This helps ensure that your team is strong at every stage of the game while also retaining a strong economy. Until you reach the late game and find Olaf, you'll want to make sure that you're using the right item carrier to hold your Olaf items. The best way to think about the mid game is to use a strong frontline with Olaf items in your backline. Some examples are vanguards with sharpshooter backline or brawlers with Olaf items on Shivana. Generally, you just want to put Olaf items on any strong attack damage carry that you can run in the early and mid game. In a perfect world, you would never roll while playing this comp until you hit level 8, where you would roll down and hit all of the units you need. However, that's not really realistic, and in my economy video, I do talk about a couple different roll timings that will help you keep your board strength up while also retaining economy. Because all of the different Olaf variations are so expensive, you really do want to have as much gold as you can before your 5-1 roll down. The best way to do this is to retain health early by slamming items, and also by making your strongest board every single turn. As you roll down, consider the three core Slayer units as well as all of the different utility units that you can run. Buying those units as you roll down, try and figure out which variation of the comp you can play with the units you've hit. The best way to find direction though is by playing around your Chosen. The priority for Chosens goes as follows. Dragon Soul Olaf, Slayer Olaf, Vanguard Aatrox, Vanguard Sejuani, and then any Chosen 5 cost unit that you could find if you hit level 9. By playing around the Chosen that you hit and choosing the variation of the comp that fits that chosen best, you should be able to make a strong enough board to take out the other players in your lobby. And that's all I've got for you guys. If you want to read this guide in greater detail, check out Gunmei's written guide. I linked it in the description for you. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and let me know what other videos you guys would like to see. Until next time.